Welcome back to The Inventor, the search for Adam Savage's next assistant. Now, we have 10 semifinalists that are working on the home challenge right now, and it's time to check in with a couple more. All right, here's Chad Burns. How you doing, Chad? How you doing, guys? What do you think of the materials we sent you? Most builders like to think they, or like to say they start with cardboard first, because they're used to taking them from a 2D plane and making a 3D shape. I tend to build them a little bit differently, and then everything I ever had to build, I had to immediately use. I know how to work with wood to build up projects, but again, not having the ability to use power tools, I can't use bandsaw, no planers, no joints. Ah! So that changed oh. your approach for this challenge, since you have a limited amount of materials. Um, are you actually going to do some prototyping here, do some design work beforehand? In all honesty, I have not started one stitch on the actual build. I've been working with light materials, just trying to figure out my methodologies for how I'm going to do this. So what are you thinking about replicating from your, from your home? I'm doing a hammer because it's the most ubiquitous maker thing in the world. It's kind of an interesting shape in that the striking head is a disc on the end of a cylinder off of a trapezoid and then it's got the claw on the back. The thing that I'm really most terrified about, honestly, is doing the handle because the handle has got all the nice wooden curve slopes and I'm like, I have no idea I'm going to pull this off. How did you get started making stuff, Jen? I have probably one of the dumbest hobbies in the world. I do full speed, full contact stick fighting. It's actually how I met my wife. I do her in a tournament. She beat me up a little bit. But, uh, you can't go down to Walmart and buy a Bisbee coat of plates or a breast and back. You need that thing. And they are pricey. So when you're poor and on a budget, you learn to make do. So I needed things that needed, that didn't exist, so I had to learn to make them. That's how I actually got into making Like you said earlier, the stuff you've made has a purpose, it has a function. And what we're asking you to make here is something uh, more aesthetic. It's about, it's about the visual accuracy. Um, is that something that you're, you're comfortable with? No. I am, I am so far past my comfort zone that it's not even funny. Again, even in the spacesuit, which everybody tells me we're great, I look at it and all I see is every single way that thing is wrong. But I learned four different ways not to make a spacesuit. I'm willing to fail miserably to learn a new skill. Well, sounds great, Chad. We can't wait to see what you do with your hammer, and uh, we'll check in with you real soon. Thanks, guys. Next up, we have Sean Charlesworth, who 3D printed a pretty awesome squid sculpture. Hey, Sean, how are you doing? Good, good. Now, we were really impressed uh, with your submission video. You must have spent thousands of hours designing and printing that. Yeah, I, yes. I had done one other 3D print prior to that, and this was really my second print. We know you're very proficient with 3D printing and modeling, but what about replicating something and using material like cardboard. I have not done any cardboard fabrication, so that's going to be an interesting challenge. Um, and uh, I've got some really steep competitions. So we'll see how it goes. What are you thinking about replicating uh, from, from your home? I have been leaning towards replicating a DSLR camera. And I would actually like to get a little bit of function worked in there as well. Uh, the seed like actually has some moving parts or whatever. What do you think your technique's gonna be for getting those curves? I did a little research and uh, and it seems a, a good good method for doing that is to score the back of the cardboard so that it can flex a little bit more. Sounds like you're learning a lot of stuff on the fly here for cardboard since it's not a material that you've worked a lot with in the past. Yeah. Uh, what of your past skills and experiences and, and things you learned in school do you think apply to this project and this challenge? Good question. I, I think what's going to help me in this project is that um, particularly working at uh, in my repair job, there's a lot of times that things like are an emergency. You know, like this camera's down and it needs to go out tomorrow. And I'm used to cobbling things together as quickly as I can with the materials on hand because we may not have time to order that one part, so I have to kind of make do with something else. So I actually work better under restrictions. So, so having just the stuff in the box will, I think, while it is a restriction, I think it would actually focus me a little bit more and help me. <laughs> so. Thanks, Sean, and uh, we can't wait to see how your project turns out. And that'll do it for this week's episode of The Inventor. And we'll be back next week with more check-ins for more semifinalists. Until then, we'll see you guys later. Bye.